Hey there everybody, happy Friday again. I'm Bobby in Maine and today, well today we're in Portland for a very special treat. Now if you're wondering exactly where in Portland we are, right now we're in a 78 acre park overlooking Casco Bay. It's called the Eastern Promenade and I'm going to take a bunch of pictures so you can see exactly how beautiful this place is. Now the Eastern Promenade isn't our final destination today. We're actually going to be heading down to the Old Port down 4th Street to catch up with someone I think you'll like to meet. I just didn't want you to to miss this view. Now, side note, as far as the old port is concerned, that definitely is one of my favorite places, and I'll be taking you down there so you can see chapter and verse on what makes the old port just a stellar destination. But today, what I really want to do, I want to set the record straight about the state of Maine. So when you think of us, you think of you know, gorgeous landscapes, vacation attractions, fantastic food, good-hearted people, and that's, that's all true. But what you may not know is that we have a pretty large and impressive community of business and creative professionals. Now these are folks with big city talent who've decided that frankly life is just better here in Maine. And one member of that community, her name is Kim Schuler. She's the owner and operator of Kim Schuler Design in downtown Portland. And Kim, well, she's our special guest today here on Bobby and Maine, and she's been kind enough to invite us back to her studio to get an inside glimpse of what it's like to be a professional designer here in Portland, Maine. So let's not keep her waiting. We have an appointment on 4th Street in the Old Port, so we're gonna leave for now anyway, the Eastern Promenade behind. We'll come back. It's just too pretty not to. All right, today we are with Kim Schuler of Kim Schuler Design, right? Yep. <laughs> Outstanding. So, first of all, the space that you're in right now is extremely cool. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Melville story. You, know, you got Bartleby the Scrivener. I think that was Melville, right? Bartleby the Scrivener? Yeah. You, you feel like you're tucked away in this little hole. And you've got this very cool contraption overhanging your head. So it's also Buster Keaton. It's like you're in a clockworks in the guts of a big machine. It's very convenient to be right above gorgeous gelato. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and inconvenient. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, point noted, so when they come to visit you, they can also get some gelato. Yes. <laughs> right on. You and I, well, we've had the pleasure of working together on dozens of projects over the last couple of years. First, we worked at a marketing agency together where we were pitching and developing programs, and these were for Fortune 100 clients, so it was no pressure there whatsoever. Kind of small potatoes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing going on there. And then most recently, we worked together on launching Bobby and Maine. Yeah. So you and I, we have the benefit of uh, some history there. So when you look at someone who is considering working with a designer, there, there wasn't really, any, on my part anyway, there wasn't any hesitation or guesswork in choosing to work with you on a project. Um, you know, I had the first-hand experience, as we mentioned, to understand exactly the caliber of designer that you are. Unfortunately, not everyone who's watching has the benefit of the experience that we've had, the, the time and friendship. So if you were looking to find a professional web brand designer uh, on a project, what credentials or must-have considerations would you use to guide that decision-making process? Yeah, um, so... I would say for web or brand design either way, uh, the best thing to look for in a designer is transparency about their process. Uh, so really being able to understand you know, where the strategy comes from behind their work because you know, design really is more than just aesthetics and a look and feel. There has to be strategy, there has to be purpose. And then also just being able to understand the client's needs um, and what, what they're looking for, what the ROI is on the project and how to how to really make sure that you hit all their marks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kim, so question one was kind of softball. I mean, it's bush league for someone of your skills. So I'm gonna just ratchet it up a little bit on question two, okay? So as you can kind of imagine, projects, they vary greatly, you know, based on the complexity of the ask, the skill and comfort level of the client. Now you and I, we kind of had our own process. So we were operating at one end of the spectrum, you will. I had a sense of you know, what I wanted to accomplish with the logo, I had complete copy, and I actually handed over a mock-up of the site. Now, at the other end, other end of this spectrum are, are clients who are really starting from page one, and they're looking to you for guidance literally every step of the way. What's your process with a page one client? Yeah, so uh, I always have an introductory conversation with a client um, when they, they're really sort of lost in what they need. Um, they know, you know what the end goal is, but they're not really sure how to get there. So. Um, an introductory call kind of goes over what they're looking for, whether it's brand ID or website design, which are two sort of two different buckets that um, my work falls under. Sometimes clients dip into both of those buckets. Um, 
So beyond the introductory call, I always facilitate a discovery session. Um, those look a little bit different depending on whether it's for brand idea or for website design. And this is a way to just figure out their brand attributes and for them to just talk conversationally and openly about their brand because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really know a lot about their own brand until they you know, they're asked these questions. Um, for website design, it's a little bit different. I definitely, while doing a brand attribute exercise, I definitely focus more on um, sort of user profiles. So figuring out who maybe the top three or four users would be for their site. And in doing that, identifying their, their key demographics. And then that helps me wireframe out the site. So um, I'm able to, to figure out what their customers' needs are, and then how to exceed those. One of my more recent clients is an author who, you know, he has some works that have been published in the past. Is um, it Dan Brown? <laughs> I wish. No, <laughs> Not Dan Brown. Okay, moving on. A little bit smaller scale. Stephen King? <laughs> oh my God, I really wish. I know, <laughs> tell me about it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Guy, his site was a little bit tricky because it needed to be accessible for um, both viewership as well as finding literary agents for the unpublished works. <laughs> So I use the discovery session process really to to unveil who his um, his you know key users would be, um, and you know to find those three we really had to dig into the content of a lot of his books. Um, they're all over the place as far as you know he's very left leaning uh, politically, so a lot of his books are about that. Um, so we really ended up finding the his three main demographics were sort of all over the place and so it made for a really interesting uh, website. The nice thing about being a sole proprietor is that you know I'm always on call and always available for a client who needs support. As far as you know once something's launched whether that's a brand identity or a website um, you know it looks a little different what that support can be but to, to reference I guess actually you as a case study um, I made sure to give you all file types that you needed gave you clear direction on which ones to use for what. So when you you know you did your vehicle graphics, made sure to have you use a vector file like an EPS uh, or the native illustrator. For website design, it's a little bit different. Um, so I use a platform that is user friendly and you know can be used by someone who's not necessarily a designer, but um, like me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that you know there's there are a lot of things to learn on the back end. So I always offer video tutorials for my clients. Um, I will go over specific things. You know, I'll send a screen share of how to upload new blog content and things like that. So the important thing about a, a website is that it's a living, breathing thing, mm. and you should constantly be adding updated content to it. Um, and that can be costly if you use you know a, a web agency or a larger scale uh, web designer um, because they don't always offer those resources of sh you know, showing you how to do it yourself. So sometimes clients kind of get stuck between a rock and a hard place in that sense. So I always offer um, video tutorials and I'm always available by phone if a client ever has you know, a hosting issue or anything like that. So those are really the, the best ways to offer support, uh, ongoing support for clients. Kim, thank you so much for taking time to welcome us into your unique and excellent office space. We appreciate yeah, your time. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Okay, we're back at the Eastern Promenade to wrap things up because, well, it's gorgeous and peaceful. And I don't know about you, but I can't get enough gorgeous and peaceful these days. So let's just take it in for a second. That's nice. It's very nice. Thank you so much for coming along to visit Kim with me today. Hopefully you found our time together fun and informative. And as you can see yourself, Kim is just one of those good people. And she's especially good if you happen to be looking for design help. So what I'm going to do is leave a link below. If you need assistance with a website, with a logo, with a color palette, with branding of any kind, definitely give her a shout. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. Oh, and uh, definitely tell her Bobby in Maine sent you. She'll get a kick out of that. That's all the Bobby and Maine I have for you today. So until next Friday, please be safe, be especially kind, and try to smile. If I've learned anything is that whatever you're going through, trials and tribulations, and we're, we're facing a lot of things right now, they're finite. Give it a day. Trust me, things are going to get better. I believe it. And entertainment helps, of course. So if you have the time, please, I'd love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, and I'd especially love to know where you'd like to go next. Where in this beautiful state of Maine would you like me to take you? From me to you, I'm Bobby in Maine.